Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, in our last philosophical episode, we discussed how man uh, was created to glorify God by reflecting his image. And we looked at some of the ways that man reflects the image of God. Uh, well, as an illustration here, I've got an old mirror and a homemade laser sight. And as you can see, I can use the mirror to reflect that laser beam. However, if the mirror was painted over or uh, otherwise obscured by some opaque substance, it would lose its reflective properties. Now, similarly, uh, as we look around at mankind today or down throughout uh, history, we rarely see men reflecting the image of God as they should. And we find out why in Genesis chapter 3, where the fall of man is recounted. Uh, the first man, Adam, basically decided that he wasn't going to accept God's plan and purpose for his life. Uh, he chose to go his own way instead, and all of his descendants, that is, all of mankind, are born into Adam's original rebellion. You know, this is what Christians refer to as the doctrine of original sin. Now, something I'd like to point out here is that sin is always self-motivated. You know, whether it's motivated by simple materialistic greed or by a sense of egotism that exalts the self above the value of others, uh, or whether it's the ultimate egotism of making oneself equal with God in one's own sight, of trying to define one's own reality, as it were, uh, and rebel against the natural order of things that God has created. Uh, sin is always self-serving in nature. It always seeks the good of the self, generally at the expense of the good of others or of the fulfillment of one's purpose. However, sin, because it rebels against man's purpose, is always hurtful to the sinner, to the one who commits it. You know, any piece of equipment that's used contrary to what it was designed for is going to be damaged. You know, that's true whether you're talking about uh, an air compressor or a welding power supply or a screwdriver or a human being. You know, you abuse it, it takes damage. And so sin is always hurtful to the one who commits it. It may hurt others as well, but it's always hurtful to the one who commits it. And so sin being simultaneously selfish and self-injurious is inherently irrational. It's completely illogical to do something out of self-interest that is self-injurious, as sin necessarily is. And so we begin to see how just as man's capacity for logic was one of the ways in which he reflected the image of God, so sin begins to obscure or tarnish that image. And so, too, as we look at fallen man, I think we can begin to see uh, selfishness replacing love, you know, laziness displacing creativity, cowardice or aversion to inconvenience eroding man's God-given love of adventure. And so it is man's sin that separates him from God, making it impossible for him to reflect the image of his creator as he ought, and thus ultimately rendering his existence futile, since his purpose was to glorify God by reflecting his image. And this, I think, is why so many, uh, down through the ages of history and up to the present time, have struggled uh, with the futility of life or with trying to find some meaning in this physical existence.